we will be building our rabbit hutch. It's time to put our third car garage stall in use. This was the stall we were planning on using as sort of a workstation. So today's the perfect day to do that because it is so windy. We've been having high wind warnings all day. So it's nice to be in the garage. The wind's coming from the south. And so our garage opening is in the north. So it's not, it's not blasting us with wind. So that's really nice. Before starting our project, we braved a trip to Home Depot with all five of our kids to get all the lumber that we would need and supplies we would need for this rabbit hutch project. We are definitely a let's do it together family. It seems we all are in on whatever project seems to be going on at the time. Once we got the lumber loaded up and into the garage, we were able to get started on this project. So we had bought pressure treated wood for most of the project except for this thin little piece that I'll show you what we use it for later. So I decided to use the stain that I had used to stain our beams for our home. And I did this just to give it an extra layer of protection. This piece of wood won't be exposed to the elements of outside, so it should be okay. A while back, I sketched up a plan for what I want the rabbit hutch to look like. And I don't, like I've mentioned before, I like have a general idea. And then I just have to start building and make mistakes along the way until I reach the final project. That's just how I am. And so I have made a little sketch. So we're just, we're looking at this sketch, thinking through the process, forwards and backwards to see which part we need to start with first. We are basing the design of our hutch off of KW cages. I want to start with a trio of rabbits, two does and a buck. We will probably grow our rabbit tree later, but for now that's what we want to start with. I at first had looked up the price of supplies of what it would cost for us to make our own hutch, just buying the wire and bending it into the hutch that we want, creating the hinges for the door, all of those things. And after I priced it out, it actually wasn't that much cheaper than than just buying the KW cages. And these cages come, you can buy them in singles, doubles, stacked cages, which I'm not a fan of because I'm not very tall. So for me to reach that stacked cage would be a little hard. Anyway, and they send you the cage disassembled, but it's fairly simple to put it all together. And I had no problem doing it. And my kids, of course, helped me set it up. And this is what the trio cage looks like. It's about 72 inches long, 18 inches high. And you can get like little baby saver spaces at the bottom where the mesh is a little more narrow or closer together so that baby rabbits can't fall through the holes. I'm really pleased with this. So that's what we're using to mold and shape our rabbit hutch around. Yeah, can you make sure this, can you hold this steady? Hold it steady, good, that's good. What we have done so far is create the base frame around the hutch. We are using the leg pieces as spacers because we want to attach them on the inside of the frame. We will have a lower frame around the base of the hutch and an upper frame that is on an angle at the top of the hutch. Once we had the bottom frame finished, we turned it onto its side so that we could measure out how long we wanted the legs to be. So we are doing the continuation of the leg all the way up to the frame. So it's kind of all one piece. We felt like that would just make it a sturdier thing altogether. We slid both legs into place and we measured how long we wanted the legs to be. So we made our legs of the hutch really long because we're gonna bury them one foot into the ground. So as we've mentioned before, here in the high desert where we live in Southern Utah, we get some pretty intense winds as you could see from Earlier today, we had high wind warnings, and so that was definitely on our mind as we were building this hutch. So we plan on making it heavy, and we also plan on burying each leg one foot into the ground. So as we're building this, it's going to look really tall, but that's just because we're going to have it a foot into the ground. Once we got all the legs in place, we were ready to move forward, and we haven't cut the tops off yet. We are plan on sawing off the tops of each of these leg pieces once we see how the cage fits into the hutch. 
So the next part is where that little thin piece comes in place. So we were planning on setting the cage onto this little ridge inside of the hutch. So we screwed in a little thin ridge all around the inside. The next phase we started to build the upper part of the frame for the hutch. At this stage we mismeasured a few things as in any homestead project there's always a mistake that will occur <laughs> at least for us but we eventually were able to figure it out and we ended up deciding to put the cage in at this point so that we could know what angle to put that top frame part. We know we wanted the frame to be taller than the back of the cage. So my inspiration for this design was that I didn't want the rabbits to be able to nibble or chew on any of the wood. And that's why we put the wire on this lip inside so that the cage was resting on it. And it's pretty snug, so the cage is actually hardly even resting on the boards below. It's a little bit, so it, I know that it's gonna be very stable and that the rabbits aren't going to be able to nibble on any of the wood because we've had cages before where if there's any exposed wood, those rabbits are gonna chew all over it. So that's something to consider when you're building a rabbit hutch. A little break, we had some dinner. We got the kids to bed. So now we have uninterrupted time to think through the siding of the rabbit hutch and the roofing options that we have. And if the hutch looks really tall, that's because it's going to be going down an entire foot into the ground, which is why we bought the pressure treated wood that can have ground contact. Because of how windy it is, we really have to secure everything that we build to the ground somehow so that it literally doesn't blow away. So we will be burying the legs of this hutch down an entire foot. We also left this front post really tall. We have the plans to cut that off. We just weren't sure at what angle to cut it at. And so we wanted to wait to do that till we knew how high and at what angle we could do it. So we'll probably just do that with a different and more portable saw. Yeah, and the back, the side and the back will have siding on it and the front will be open. So we were ready to tackle sawing off the top pieces. And I don't know if it is our saw or if it was because this wood was a little bit wet, but our saw was really struggling and it was smoking a lot as it was doing this process. So we barely made it through the four pieces. <laughs> there you go. So once we had the top pieces how we wanted them, we also added some supports at each leg of, at the base of the hutch. We just felt like we really wanted it to be strong and very well supported. And this was the last thing that we were able to do tonight. It's the next day and Nate was working, so I was on my own for a little bit of it, getting the roof paneling on the rabbit hutch. So we were using a plastic panel on the top and because I didn't have a saw that could cut that type of material we ended up just using some scissors. My husband used to sell Cutco years and years ago and so we have a pair of what they call super shears and they're really sharp scissors so I was actually able to just cut right through this plastic sheeting and layer the pieces on top. We decided to do the roofing material before finishing out the top frame of our hutch just so that we knew the perfect angle for the wood pieces on the sides. And because the kids are always around as I'm working and doing a project, they decided to test out the hutch with their stuffed animals and it seemed like every time I turned the corner 
there were like six more animals in each cage and I think they organized them by habitat <laughs> so that was fun for them and kept them entertained so in order to secure these plastic sheets I just used a shorter screw I thought it would actually ruin it to use a screw so I had originally planned on using a nail but the screws worked great and held it in place really well so as I mentioned to you guys before I'm kind of a build and create as I go kind of a person we hadn't bought enough wood to create this back beam because I didn't think about it and I don't like kick myself for that I'm just like oh that's we've learned something now whenever we build something in the future we want to make sure that that board is there but we did have this board in the basement and my kids have used it as a balance beam and they have colored it so it's just beautiful. The siding will go over this so you won't really see it, but it will be kind of fun to know that that board is now part of our rabbit hutch. <laughs> so I'm, I just cut the pieces to fit and I also put on the side here, a piece going along this way so that we can attach the siding. So as I'm attaching these top pieces, I am making sure to secure this back side really really well because this backside will be facing the south of our property and we get a ton of south wind so I know that it'll be blowing up on that fairly aggressively and so I don't want these panels ripping off again everything we build we have to keep the wind in mind We got our paint brushes and we are ready to paint. Nate and I lifted it out of the garage to paint it out in the dirt so that if we spill it doesn't get everywhere. But we might move it back into the garage till we're ready to put it in the ground. But I don't want to put it in the ground till after we've dug the trenches because it might be kind of in the way. So I'm actually choosing the same color that our house is. Well, similar, it's not exactly the same. I kind of want all of our outbuildings, hutches, coops, sheds to kind of match our home. The kids are ready to help me, so let's go. Letting our kids be involved with each step of the process of building and growing our homestead is something that I really want to strive for. Even if it slows me down a little bit or it adds a little bit of extra stress, I want them to gain these experiences and I want them to feel the good feelings you get when you accomplish something difficult. And painting this hutch was something I knew they were gonna really want to be involved with. So I just gave them each a little paintbrush that they could use and not do too much damage with. And they went to town. It was so fun and I let them help me on the back, but then I did give them the excuse that we wouldn't all fit on the sides and I sent them on their way to go play. <laughs> got the first coat done I'm gonna do another coat just to solidify it so all I'm painting is the outside of it and we're leaving the front wood which now I'm thinking I might want to change that we'll see but one benefit of living somewhere where it's really dry is that the paint dries really fast so it's already ready for another coat just fed the baby now for more painting. I do think I'm gonna paint the front two bars. I feel like that would just complete the look. That wasn't my original plan, but I think that'll make it look complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. I 
just got it all finished and it looks amazing. Is it perfect? No. Is it beautiful? Yes. All right, you guys, I think we are now ready to invite the first animals onto our homestead. Mm -hmm.